Hi everyone and welcome back to another video from our Lost Property Office page and I'm excited that we're going to start this page um, with our little bits and pieces so we need to come in a little bit closer I think um, I may come in quite close actually and move along as we go let's bring the umbrellas in let's do the umbrellas first now I was thinking about these just now when I was prepping now I always have a black umbrella so I'm actually going to do this first umbrella in black so this is our number nine our black and I think I'm going to do a fairly light black layer to start with and then these are big umbrellas too I often have umbrellas that sort of fold up a little bit so not this big but these are much better these bigger um, long umbrellas they don't blow inside out but they don't fit in your handbag I think that's a little bit pale I'm going to do another layer and then we'll do a little bit of shadowing, shading, whatever we might want to call it. So we don't want to make it too black. So here where we've got this line, I'm going to put a, sh a bit of a shadow there. I'm just going to tidy up that edge. And this line, I'm just trying to work out which side, put it on the right hand side of this one. This one's a sticking out line, so we need to put a shadow there and then one there and then these ones at the back make them a little bit darker because they're further away like that now I'm thinking the handle will be black and then we can do these bits in a sort of silver just to uh, make them look a little bit different so I'm going to make it black blackest around the edge and then a little bit in the middle try and make it look a bit more rounded if I can then I'm going to use the lighter silver so that we've got more of a contrasting colour number 80 so for this bit I mean normally I would actually expect that to be black to match the handle but it's quite nice to just have a different colour there there we go okay so there's our black one um, I just realised I need to just put a little bit more along the edge there. Gosh, my stomach's rumbling. It's not lunchtime yet. Right. This one, let's make it a lot more brighter and fun. Um, let's do it pink. But let's do it in this sort of 61, so it's quite a bright colour. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, let's just get some colour down. I'm trying to remember what colour Mary Poppins' umbrella was, but I can't. I know she had the parrot on the handle. I can't remember what colour the actual umbrella was. Was it? Oh, is it black? I'm trying to. I I just don't know. I think it'd be a bit darker here where it's sort of pulled in because there's this little tie keeping it all together. like that. Now I think I'm going to do this tie in the handle in a contrasting colour just for fun. Just make it a little bit darker at the bottom I think. Being a bit fussy. Why not? So I'm going to grab this purple, number six, and do this bit here. Just making it a little bit lighter in the middle. Same with this bit. A bit dark on the outside. Oh, I didn't succeed there. And again with this one, I want to do a really heavy layer around the edge. I don't know what that sort of bit is that Johanna's drawn there. I'm afraid I'm going to just ignore it because I don't know what it is. And then a bit lighter in the middle just so it looks a bit more rounded. Okay. Our other one, I think let's do it. Mm, let's do it green, shall we? I don't know why. Let's do it with number 38. Again, just a lighter layer to start with and then we can think about we're going to do the tie bit in the same colour this time because it often is I used to have a nice umbrella like this 
but it had um, it had some string pattern on it with little holes. It was a bit silly, really. It had little holes in the umbrella. I'm going along these lines that Johanna's drawn in a slightly darker layer just to make it look. It sort of emphasises the gathered up gathering in the material. And I'm going to do the bit a bit dark on the edges down here. And uh, had these um, like aglets around the holes that the string looped through, and they were metal. And they went rusty. It's like it's an umbrella. It's going to get wet. It was, I was quite cross. And it was really expensive as well. Number eight. So this is a grey colour for the um, for these bits. So leave a little bit of shine, I think. Could look, maybe it's leather or a shiny plastic. Just a bit lighter in the middle. There we go. Um, oh, the iPhone's ringing. I'm going to have to go. Right, I was on the phone for quite a long time, but back now, and just thinking that we need to do these little hooks that the umbrellas are hanging on. Um, I'm thinking maybe I'll do them the colour of the shelves, just because um, I don't want to do them sort of silver or sort of colour, because... Um, it might not show up with the black. So I've grabbed number 73, which was the colour we used for all the shelves. I'm just going to do those and also the ones that are on the other side. I just need to move the book across to reach those. I'm just going to do those as well right now, just so that I remember, really. There we go. Okay, so I'm just thinking where we're at now, because, oops, my pencils are misbehaving, one moment, I'm just going to move them a tad, there we go, okay, so let's start with this jar, now, as I've said before, it's actually much easier to colour your jar um, as if it was coloured glass, than as if it were um, see through. Um, I think we'll grab a nice, this nice blue. This is number 35. And um, we'll, I'm just checking, you can see. We'll make this rim. I guess this is the lid, really. But we'll colour it as if it's a glass stopper. Because I've just started doing it with this colour. And then here. Now I'm colouring over the objects because we would see them through the glass. Now I'm trying to figure out, I'm thinking they might be mint imperials and therefore they'd be white and so they would just look the colour of the glass so we wouldn't really need to colour them in. That's what I'm thinking. I'm not, it sounds like I'm being a bit lazy and I'm thinking, am I being lazy? But I think that sort of makes sense. The label though... Hmm, maybe a pink colour. So I'm going to grab number 25 and do quite a hard layer around here. Like this. And then a bit less in that middle area. There we go. Okay. Next we have a plant. I wonder if someone lost a plant. Oops. Bang the desk with my chair. Everything wibbles and wobbles. I'm going to use number 57. I always want to pull my chair under the desk, but there, it, there's a leg in the way. So I forget and I bash it. Because I want to get a bit closer. <laughs> I have to just sit on the edge of the chair instead. I forget. So I'm going to do all of these little bits of plant the same colour quite small I'm not going to worry about trying to do any sort of darker or lighter areas and 
and I was sort of thinking about the plant pot. We've got another little rabbit there. Oh. Hmm. I'm just quite working out. Is that the edge of the pot? But no, that's the edge of the pot. And then what colour pot? Hmm. Let's do an orangey colour pot. Why not? This is number four. Sorry, that went very blurred, didn't it? I didn't think that we were in close enough for it to go that blurred, but I obviously held it too close to camera. Okay, let's just fade it towards the middle a little bit and make it look a little bit shiny. There we go. Not too fancy. Now our rabbit. Mm. I was thinking about doing him in a yellow and then I wondered if he would really show up very much so maybe I should do him a bit pink. Her, him, her, number 20. And I'm going to use the circular movement to try to make it look like fluffy, cuddly, furry texture. No bunny. It's very cute, isn't he? I wonder if Johanna did the toys after her her girl's favourite toys. I wonder. Because uh, I know my one of my boys used to have a favourite tiger, and. Uh, Tiger disappeared once, but never found him. It's very sad. Ribbon, I think I'm going to do in a dark blue just because it will then really stand out. So, number three. Yeah, I always think um, Tiger must have got recycled because we were throwing Tiger in a box and trying to get him inside it when there's a huge deep box, you couldn't see the bottom. And uh, the box got recycled, and I think Tiger must have been in it. There we go. I'm going to do Rabbit's nose in the dark grey. You could use black. Uh, ooh. <sighs> Number eight. My other son. I'm trying to remember if he had a favourite. Now the radio. Um, it's always tempting to do radios in black. My little transistor radio was black that I owned. I'm going to use number eight which is the grey to do this grill bit on the front but I'm thinking these days radios come in all sorts of colours uh, sort of tend to be pastel colours like oh, we haven't done rabbit's label um, like um, hmm, minty green or pastel yellow or pastel blue um, I'm going to do Rabbit's label. I'm going to grab a number 49 for Rabbit's label. Oh, I'm not going to do that label the same colour. I'm going to grab the number 10 for the tape. There we go. <clears throat> um. I'm going to do a few black details, so with number 9 I'm going to do the buttons here in black and this bit, I don't know what that is and around here yeah I used to like my little radio the battery's lasted for ages I think it came from Argos I'm going to do the handle in black too I'm going to try and do it a little bit darker around the edges. Yeah, it was a good little radio. I think eventually it broke, but you know, things don't last forever. I used to listen to the tennis on it. And the chart show, of course. So I am thinking pale blue. So number 30, gosh that's quite white, it's quite hard to read isn't it? This looks 
quite a big radio. I mean, it's very hard to tell sizes, but look at the size of the flask. My radio is quite small. And then I got a um, uh, cassette player, like a Walkman, but not a Walkman. Now the label. I always like to do the label sort of random colour. I think red. Oops, this is an orangey red. Number two. Yeah, but my tape player was cheap. And it was red, which wasn't a very trendy colour. But still, I had a lot of fun with it. My parents didn't have loads of money. Now for this one... I'm going to do the flowers first, so I'm going to give them yellow middles with number one. And then, um, hmm, pink. I'm thinking, whoops, except I can't get a hold of it. There we go. Number 23. I can certainly see how you might leave a flask on a train or behind. It's so easy. We've got another one here and another one there. It's like a little collection of flasks. This one's got a more 1960s design on it, I think. Which is a lot of fun. I want to make this flask blue. And I think I can, because... Why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't they put a blue thing next to a blue thing? This is 35 though. This is screeny, but it's actually the one we use for the bottle jar. No. I use this one. Number 37. I just want it to be a little bit different. I'm going to use it quite hard though. I want it to almost look metallic by just leaving a little white bit in the middle. Don't know how well it'll work. Fun that is. There we go. Now this one I think looks like a sort of I want it to be brown, the um shapes. So I'm gonna grab this one. This is the 76, and I'm gonna make those shapes dark brown. And maybe that little brim bit at the top too, this bit. And then the main flask I'm actually going to colour in green. I'm going to use this little one, 56. This one's going to run out soon. Just fade it towards the middle. There would be some shine I think. even if it wasn't metallic it would be sort of paint shiny paint there we go and then we have the one behind hmm how color should we do that one maybe orange we haven't used any orange for a little bit so it's um number 42 i'm going to use it over the whole flask and then I'm going to put the dots in after with a slightly darker colour. I think it'll be easier that way. So there's our shine. And then I'm going to use this one, number 24, for the dots. Might need it sh sharper. Yeah, I'm going to have to sharpen it. So yes, the phone rang. I was away on the phone. Then I had lunch. <laughs> now I'm back. It's quite a long, a long gap. But that's okay. Now I'm just going to move the book across a little bit. For our last bit. I have to move it up for that last bit of umbrella or zoom out or something. But anyway, we do this. Um, looks like a hat box to me. Um, I'm thinking a nice lilac, whoops, 
so number 62 and like I did with this I'm going to do the pale colour first and then put a darker one on top for those triangle shapes I think it makes it a lot easier now I'm going to try and fade the colour a little bit towards the middle because it will um, help to make it look more rounded because obviously the way Johanna's drawn it is supposed to be round so by doing it this way we can emphasise that a little bit trying not to colour on that handle but I don't think it, it's not going to matter because we're going to colour it in the same colour as the triangles I think it would sort of match that's how I would do it if I was designing it anyway and we'll do that little bit in there as well and I'm thinking maybe a dark blue uh, yeah maybe this really dark blue this is number 33. Sometimes I think this looks a little bit purpley, so it might just work really well. Yeah, I like that combo. I thought my son was going to be streaming this afternoon. We decided he's going to do it this evening just to see if he can get a different audience which is interesting because uh, normally he either streams between one and three or two and four in the afternoon but it can still be a bit early for some people in some countries so he's going to see if he can get a different audience label just because I haven't used it yet number 63 And then we have these two boxes. Um, hmm, we have sellotape on them both. I think I'm going to grab this number 10 to do the tape. Just start with while I'm pondering. Um, I think we might do this one in the sort of peachy colour. Um, this is number 43. And we'll do this top box in this. Now, I find this is quite a pale colour. I'm really going to work it to get some colour out. Just layer it up a lot. The same, just layer and layer. And then reduce. The same here, layer it up. A shoebox below, I'm thinking of a colourful. But we do just need to do that label. I'm just going to grab number 29. It's just a red. Now I'm thinking that my children, when they used to get their school shoes, the boxes were green. So I'm going to do it green. Number 52. I'm going to do it all the same colour, the same, sorry, the same pressure across the whole of the box and then we'll think about which side's going to be darker. I had this great book, colouring technique book, which I've reviewed for you, which explained how certain sides of, say, a cube would be darker because of the shadows and I think it would be that side. But I'm going to put a little shadow underneath the lid like that. Lovely. And now we've got that little label, which I'm going to do in number 77. I realise I'm just really squiffy, aren't I? But we're going to um, alter our, the way our come out a little bit. Oops. I'm trying to zoom out with my pencil sharpener. It's really work. Uh, let's try and get these umbrellas into fairly near the middle. There we go. Okay. Now we have the three. Um, where should we start? Let's start with a blue umbrella. I think blue is a rather nice colour for an umbrella. Whoops. This is number three. It's not too dark, not too light. And uh, we should just put a layer over. And then we can think about where we might put some darker and lighter areas. I find it nice and easy at times just to put a layer on first. 
at the end of each of the spokes on this one we've got a little bit which is rather cute there could be a little bead these bits on the back are going to be darker so I'm just going to make those darker then I'm thinking about these bits these would be sticking in so it would be darker on that bit and darker on this outside whoops Fade that in a little. Same on this one, so it'd be darker here and here. We could just fade it a bit. And then again here. And there we go. Nice art basic umbrella. I'm just going to darken that bit a bit. And then we've got the handle and bits to do. I think maybe we'll make the handle lighter. On all the others, I made it darker, but why not? Let's make it lighter with number 30. Just hoping you can see. Yes, you can. It's really hard for me to see um, that bit on my camera. It's showing something. I think I need to fiddle with the display settings so that I don't have that bit showing. And then it won't get in my way. There's that top bit. This bit's normally black. I'm going to do this bit in blue though. And then grab a um, grab a black which has fallen out of the tin onto my book. <laughs> Number nine. And just do this little bit here. This bit in here. And each of these. I might want to do those blue. It doesn't really matter. I just somehow think they'll look better in black. There we go. There's our blue umbrella. This one, I thought we could do this colour. This is the number 16. I don't think we've used this yet. So, we again, in the same way, just use it quite lightly across the whole of the fabric area. It's hard to believe there are only six umbrellas. I would have thought that would have been one of the most left items. As well as bags of groceries. But then they wouldn't keep those, would they? There we go. And then a few lines down from there. And they might be a little bit darker down here at the bottom and maybe around the edge. There we are. Now the top, I think I'm going to give it... Um, hmm. Can't work out where I'm putting that. I was going to make it black, the other parts, but maybe it would be a lighter colour because it's light. A black would be a bit harsh, wouldn't it? Let's do number 49, make it sort of light, a bit lighter on this handle. That probably would be the same colour as the fabric, really. But it's too late now and this would probably be metal but I think it's quite fun to just tie it all in now what colour haven't we done we haven't done an orange umbrella I think that's a bit a bit mad we haven't done a red or a purple I think a dark purple I'm gonna do that so number six so again we'll go all over the fabric to start with And then we'll start to just put some darker areas where Johanna has drawn them on for us. And it immediately gives us a slightly more three-dimensional look with very little effort at all. Um, then we have our handle. I think I might do the handle the same colour. We've only done that on our black one. But I think it would be rather nice to have one like that again. And all the same colour. Like that. Maybe that would continue on there. Probably wouldn't, but you know. 
There we go. And then I'm going to just use the light um, grey, I think, for the other two parts, which is number 80. Right, I think I'm going to make that do for that um, for this for today. I'm going to come out, move the book a little bit so you can see the whole bit. There we go. And uh, I'm just going to check that I have done it all, which I have. <laughs> I think. Oh no, the handle of the flask. Well, it's the handle of the cup, isn't it? There we go. Now I think we're done. So that's me for today. So I will be coming back to do more. Um, I might do this very cluttered shelf next. I might not do any of the things on the edges because there's such a lot going on here. And then maybe, um, maybe when we do this shelf, we might do these bits. I haven't quite decided yet. But there's still quite a lot of videos here to do seems to be more on this page than the other page but i'm not really sure but anyway we will find out as we go but for now thank you very much for watching have a really lovely day and happy coloring <laughs>